Day five of the let's make it up as we go along Necron challenge because you could never have too much choice. And today we are going gold. We're back to the airbrush booth for this one and we're using good old army painter speed paints. It's as if there's a running theme. I mean, I admit, I love the speed paint. <laughs> and we're gonna start off the Necron with a super shiny polished silver. Super shiny and super smooth, and this is gonna be our base coat. Now from a previous video, we did a purple toned Necron, but we used speed paint through the airbrush for that one. I'm just gonna show you what a hand painted purple wash will look like over the metallic color. Just in case that might give you ideas for other things, such as anything Slaneshi for example. And you can see that the hand painted purple tone kind of just tints the metal a little bit, but you still get that nice purple metallic finish. Anyway, back to our golden boy Necron Tony. Aztec gold was used now to spray over the whole miniature. Did I need to do the purple tone? No, but I did want to show you what it would look like. So you're welcome casual YouTube viewer. And it's not really going to affect our gold that we're going to spray on. And you can also see the difference between this Necron and the one that we did earlier on in the series using Hoplite Gold and that zealot yellow tint that we did. I also quickly tidied up the gun by respraying the polished silver on any areas where the gold managed to get on there. And as always, the exoskeleton was painted in a different colour to the actual armour of the Necron, just so that it breaks up the miniature a little bit and gives it some detail. And a dark tone wash was slapped onto both of the exoskeleton and the gun. The way that this dark tone works is that it sinks into the recesses of the sculpt and it gives us some instant shading which is quite beneficial for these Necrons because they're very mechanical looking and they have a lot of angular bits going on. I'm thinking that Tony should have a little bit of glow to him. So we're going to spray it on a whitish undercoat ready for our base coat glow colour. And whilst we're experimenting I thought let's light him up and do the inner chest cavities as well. Similar to what we did with this Necron on a previous video. And for the base coat, I decided to go for a magic blue speed paint. Here, I'm just using a torn post-it note just to make sure I don't get any overspray onto the legs behind the pipe. And for spraying the chest area, I thought I might as well try the whole thing first and see how it goes. Because I could always use the gold and knock it back a little bit if I think it's gone a bit too extreme. So let's get the airbrush out of the way and we'll do the rest by good old brush. I'm firstly going to add a little bit of shading to the blue areas, and this is mainly for the inner workings on the recesses. Which will be the opposite method of how we did the purple gorse on a previous video, where it's more of a whitish light on the inner workings. The pipe underneath the weapon was also given just a smidge of shading towards the upper areas. And the gorse weapon itself had the blue painted, but more towards the Necron himself, as I'm thinking I might have something a little bit lighter towards the end of the weapon. And now we start lightening things up. Similar to what we did before, I'm kind of doing a dotted layered highlight on the pipe, just to build up the colour. And then also highlighting the outer workings of the vent thing on the side of the gun. And I'm just going to paint on a series of lines which will make concentric circles going around the weapon itself. And these will get closer up towards the right hand side of the weapon away from the Necron. And I'm thinking that this could be like a pulse energy kind of weapon. It might not be the Necron thesis, but I suppose collectors of the Admech might want to try something similar for their miniatures. Because this series of videos is all about experimenting and seeing what might work, but also trying something a little bit different. And each time the paint is used on the gorse weapon, then the same is used for the glow on the body. So eventually we'll end up with a darker blue coming through to a more pale blue white. And to give just a little bit of reflection to the metal underneath, 
our magic blue speed paint was used just once more and then this was highlighted on the top of the metal with our void shield blue colour. And Tony's energy weapon is looking pretty cool next to Edmund's. We've got a nice blue compared to a whitish turquoise colour and two completely different methods for painting gorse weaponry. Now there was just a couple more things that I wanted to get done before starting on any sort of weathering on the gold and that was just to complete the metals. Just a little highlight and a few chips added here and there on the gorse weapon and the exoskeleton which was then followed up by tidying the chest plate with our hoplite gold. As I did feel that there was just a little bit too much blue going on at the front of the miniature. And because this Necron is way too clean, I mean what, as he had like a sonic shower or something? This isn't Star Trek. We're gonna dirty him up by adding a little bit of sponging and I'm using Rhinox Hide for this one. Yes, I know it's a Citadel paint, but Army Painter, they do not do a deep dark brown. Yet. And then this was followed up with some Corpse Pale, and I'm pretty much going over where I used the brown before, but just making sure that I don't cover all of it up. It's better to always do a little bit of weathering first, and if you need more, then you can come back to it. And whilst I was patting him on the head, I thought, oh, there's just something missing from this Necron, and that's a story to tell. So like Nicolas Cage and Face Off, I took the Necron's face off and added some red. My initial thoughts is that I wanted it to be kind of like a death mask, so it will be quite bold and evil looking. Just whatever you do, try not to think about the red skull. Oh. I just tried a couple extra things to add to Tony's personality, including adding a green Necron rune, which then turned into a yellowy orange one, and I think I kind of prefer having a Necron with a bit of red and a bit of yellow to it. So I think I might include that in my final Necron choice. Hmm.